Hi guys, it's Sarah from The Little Rose 9314, and today, since I watched the Allegiant trailer that just dropped, I thought I would look up more young adult book-to-movie adaptations that are coming out, supposed to be coming out within the next five years or so, I would believe. So I'm going to look those up, and I'm going to be... Telling you my thought processes on turning them into books to movies. Movies and what it says about it. So, this one I got from www.denofgeeks.us. So, I don't know if it's legit legit, but I've heard a lot of these are getting a book to movie adaptation. So, I'm gonna say they're somewhat legit. But let's get started. Okay, so the first one is uh, Lockwood and Co. The Screaming Staircase by Jonathan Strode, I believe his name is. Uh, I've never heard of this book, but we'll see what the synopsis says. Uh, in a world where only young people can see and defeat ghosts, demons, and other assorted spooks, a team of teen exorcists heads to a legendary clod house to try to solve the mystery of the screaming staircase. Uh, that actually sounds pretty interesting. I would probably watch, watch it, but let's see. Um, the adaptation. The rights to ad adapt the book were nagged up even before the novel was released back in 2012. Illumination Entertainment and Universal Pictures were working on it, but no more news seems to have been forthcoming since the initial announcement. So this one might come to theaters, but at the same time it might not. So let's pr pray it does, because it seems interesting. Um, the next book here seems to be Dumplin' by Julie Murphy. I have not read Dumplin' yet. I heard it was a great young adult novel. And it's on my to-read list, but let's see what it's actually about. Dumplin' is a story of Willow Dean Dixon, a fat girl nicknamed Well Dumplin', who decides to enter a beauty pageant. That one could be interesting. I don't like the term that they called her a fat girl. Girl, there's uh, more nice ways to put that on there, but the adaptation <clears throat> is actually going to be produced by Disney, so Disney bought the rights to that one. So, uh, if any of you fans of Dumpling, are you satisfied with Disney taking it on, or would you rather have another studio do it, because Disney isn't that bad. I mean, they didn't do that bad with Star Wars, honestly. So, we'll see. <clears throat> so, The Walled City by Ryan Grodden seems to be the third one on here. I never heard of this book, so let's see. A dystopian future, three children are just trying to survive in a lawless silly city, which might have given them the skills to escape. The adaptation was uh, bought by Ivanhoe Pictures late last year, but that's all that seems to be showing up for this movie. I'm not 100% sure about this one. I'm getting a little tired of seeing dystopian all over the place lately, and I don't think it's gonna do good if it's bought, but we'll see. Okay, the fourth one seems to be Ghost Girl by... I know I'm gonna butcher this name. T Tanya? Oh, it's Tanya. Hurley and Ghost Girl. I've heard of it, never read it, but... We'll see. Uh, not very popular teen Charlotte feels invisible. Then she chokes to death on a gummy bear and is literally invisible. A ghost recruited to an act as a conscious to other teens in need. Um, 
this one seems interesting. I've never read the book before. I heard it's a cute book. So let's see what... So apparently uh, Marv Films snagged this one up last year. So that's pretty interesting. So the director, Matthew Vaughn. Well, the producer is actually. Let's see, uh, Matthew Vaughns, who directed X-Men First Class, is set to produce this one, so it's pretty much probably gonna turn into a movie, so let's pray on that. Okay, another book that I've heard of is Eleanor and Park by Rainbow Rowell. Rowell, that one is apparently becoming a movie. So it says, in early devastating romance, Eleanor and Park was Rainbow Rowell's second novel, and it captivated her... Onto the bestseller list is basically a love story, but an incredibly moving one. That's not really a good description, I feel, but whatever. Um, DreamWorks optioned this book last year. And Ral act herself actually drafted a screenplay, so that's interesting. Things don't seem to be moved much, but everyone still seems pretty optimistic that I'll make it to the big screen. Um, yeah, I think it has potential. A Tale Dark and Grim by Adam Gitzwitz, I think. Uh, the book, as the title suggests, it's a kind of fairy tale, a fairy tale adaptation. Hansel and Gretel run away from their story and find themselves in the middle of a familiar fairy tale, trying to find their own happy ending. Uh, that one seems pretty interesting, and I love fairy tale to movie adaptations so I'm definitely gonna see this one. Oh, it was optioned by Film Nation in 2012 so that's like a long time coming so Henry Selleck who was the director of The Nightmare Before Christmas and Coraline which is interesting because Tim Burton did both of those but okay So, he's gonna direct. They already have script writers who are John W. Mann and John Ginn writing the script. But things are in the quiet, but it still says in development I IMBD. So, let's hope. This turns into this one right here. This book to movie adaptation has been set to be going on forever. I've read these books. I've read all these books, even though a lot of people don't like them. But this movie, for whatever reason, keeps on getting pushed back and pushed back and pushed back. There have been supposed special screenings for this movie, but not a single trailer which really ticks me off, and if any of you are a fan of this franchise, I guess you already guessed it, but that's Fallen by Lauren Kate. Kate, this tells the story of Luz. Luz basically uh, kills her crush spontaneously. He spontaneously combusts, and Luz is blamed for it, so she's sent to Sword and... Swords and Cross Reform School, where she meets Cam and Daniel. I was a total fan of this series, and now it keeps on getting pushed back. And it was really bugging me, but let's see what it says. Uh, Disney now the rights to this book almost immediately. It's got a director, Scott Hicks. So, it's uh, set to hit screen this y next year at some point, which is probably this year, or 2017. I'm just over here going like, whatever, I'm starting to lose interest in this book-to-movie adaptation. I'll still see the adaptation, but, you know, it might flop considering that it kept on getting pushed back. This book right here, uh, I didn't like... 
I'm not excited for this book movie adaptation, but I know a lot of people are, and that is The Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Lainey Taylor. So this book, uh, follows, it doesn't even say who it follows on the description, but it follows Karu, and yeah, this is how much I don't like book when I forget what it's about, but yeah, it was just a, like a mixture. It was all over the place, so I didn't like the book, but the adaptation was acquired by Universal Pictures back in 2011. Uh, let's see. So the person who is set to be adapting this to the big screen is Stuart Beatty, and he's a writer of G.I. Joe, The Rise of the Cobra, and Tomorrow, When the War Began. So he's set to be writing the screenplay. Offer Lane Taylor said she worked on a draft of the script at the end of last year, but there doesn't seem be any further news since then. So, we have no clue if this will be picking up soon. I know for the newest one that I saw, like, a while ago, it was on Facebook, so I don't know how I could pull that up. But I know it's set to be coming soon, so... We'll see. Uh, this one right here, I'm not into Lauren Oliver's style, but this one, I know for a fact, they, uh, I think they casted Zoe, Zoe Deutsch as Sam, who plays Rose in Vampire Academy, and she wasn't that bad of an actress, so I might go see this, but as for the book, I still have it on my to-be-read shelf right over here. So, Before I Fall is about a girl who is killed by the in a car accident, but is forced to repeat the same day that she died over and over again. Like I said, I, with Lauren Oliver, I like the concept of her books, but I don't like her writing style, so I can't really get into her. But let's see what it says. Uh, Zoe Deutsch is starring as the unfortunate teen, like I already know. So, yay. Uh, Fox 2... Thousand option the book in 2010, but it's now with Awesomeness Films, who is the company behind Smosh the Movie. So we, d I don't know. I hope that the studio could have a good time with this book to movie adaptation. I know a studio that let us down when it came, a small studio that let us down when it came to a book to movie adaptation. Vampire Academy, so let's hope this isn't the same thing. I'm still gonna see the movie. I wasn't that interested in book. Still probably gonna read the book, but still, we'll see. Of course, it says Zoe Deutsch is set to star as Sam, which I already knew. Another Lauren Oliver that is set to actually appear is Panic by Lauren Oliver. Uh, if I remember the synopsis of this book correctly, it's about these teens that come from a small town that get really bored, so they have these games called Panic Games. I believe that's what it's about. Are pit against one another in a terrifying game of Panic in which the aim to prove yourself fearless. Okay, so yeah, it is about games. Haha, <laughs> I knew it. Uh, Universal got this one. Earlier this year, it was announced that the studio had hired Oliver herself to write the screenplay and bring her characters to the big screen. So, this one, I actually like the direction they're going in by bringing in the offer to screenplay their own book. Look, I wish more book-to-movie adaptations would do that, considering how many off-the-spot book-to-movie adaptations we've had so far. So, I really hope she does go with this one. Okay, this one I'm actually excited about, and that is Shadow and Bone by Lee Bardugo. 
I'm excited to see this one. I have yet to read the book, but I've heard nothing but good things about this series. So let's see what it says about what it's about. Uh, I can give you a description about it, but it's not going to be as good as the synopsis here. Um, an orphan girl in a fantasy world discovers her own magical abilities when her best friend is in danger, making her an in-demand monster hunter. So that's pretty interesting. I'm definitely going to see this one. If it actually hits the big screen. The adaptation. These rights were snatched by DreamWorks, it said, back in 2012. The producer is David Hamin, the man who actually saw the potential in the Harry Potter series, so that's cool. So, next book is a book I haven't heard of, and that's 13 Little Blue Envelopes by Maureen Johnson. So let's see what this book is about. Another of seemingly rare YA novels set in the real world, 13 Little Blue Envelopes, follows a teenage girl who sets off on a trip across Europe following a blizzard. Oh, a bizarre set of instructions from her aunt. Uh, it actually sounds like a contemporary novel that I actually want to pick up now. But the adaptation... Let's see... Yeah, it seems... This book was published in 2005, so there's still hope for a lot of book-to-movie adaptations for that one, if it got barely picked up. Now, uh, the rights were acquired by New Line Cinema earlier in 2015, so there's not much about this book yet, but we'll see. Next book is Chaos Walking by Patrick Ness. I haven't heard, I've heard of The Knife of Never Letting Go by Patrick Ness, but I haven't heard of this one. So let's see. Uh, Chaos Walking is the name of the trilogy, which includes The Knife of Never Letting Go. Ah, okay. Okay, so The Chaos Walking is a trilogy. So it includes The Knife of Never Letting Go, The Ask and the Answer, and The Monster of Men. It's set on New World, which all living creatures can hear one another's thoughts. So I'm actually, so now that I just got corrected on that one, I'm so excited for that to turn into a movie. Movie, I haven't read the book yet, but I'm pretty excited to. So, uh, Lionsgate bought the rights to this in 2011. Uh, Robert Zemakis is reportedly attached to this, but we'll see. The script seemed to be getting bounced from one writer to another, with Charlie Kaufman taking a crack in 2012, and Jamie Lennon tapped to write it a draft last year, so it's bouncing around from screenwriter to screenwriter, so apparently they're having trouble with actually getting a script off the ground, which, you know, it takes a lot to actually get a good screenwriter. So, I get it. Uh, the next book here is Immortal Rule by Julie Kakawa. <clears throat> I've heard of this book. I've actually never read it, but I've heard of it. <clears throat> so, this is in a post-apocalyptic world. The red lung virus has turned most of the world's population into vampires, and those that aren't are either ravaging mindless nightmares or enthralled to a vampire master, except Allison, a teenage girl looking for a fabled Eden free of vamps. So, this is about a girl who basically hates vampires, and I believe she actually become is a vampire in this one. So... It's optioned by Palorma Pictures in 2012, and that's all they know at the moment. But if it does become a book, I'm excited for it. Another book-to-movie adaptation that is supposed to be set is Unaddressed in Blood by Kendrin Blake. I've heard of this one, I just haven't read it. Um... 
Cass is a teenage monster hunter. Anna is vengeful ghost. Q horror and a little bit of romance, weirdly enough. This adaptation was picked up by Fickle Fish Films. And apparently that's Stephanie Meyer's production company. So, uh, I don't really know that, I didn't know that Stephanie Meyer had a production company, but we'll see how she does with this one. It's interesting. Why would Stephanie Meyer name her company Fickle Fish Films? Let's hope that this movie doesn't become fickle. I know, bad joke, I'm sorry. Please don't kill me. Okay, so The Bone Season by Samantha Shannon was also picked up. I've heard of The Bone Season, I've just never read it. I know, I know I should get into more YA fiction. I'm sorry. So, in the future, an evil corporate dictator controls everything, but a young woman with clairvoyant powers might be able to might be about to change that if she can avoid the criminal underworld and inner dimension begins. Uh, that's pretty interesting. I would totally see this. Actually. Let's see. Uh, Imaginarium Studios saw the potential in this film and bought the rights last year and it's currently in production so this one, yay, in production. So the next one is The Iron Trial by Cassandra Clare and Holly Black, which is interesting. I've heard about it, but we'll see. Uh, a district Harry Potter story for writers of Mortal Instruments and the writer of The Spiderwit Chronicles, The Iron Trial, sees Cal enroll in the Magisterium, a school of mages where he'll learn to control and develop his own magical powers if he survives. I've heard this is a good book, so I might, might pick it up, read it, and see the movie, but we'll see. Uh, the film rights were acquired by Constantin Films, the same company who created the Mortal, Mortal Instrument movies and the upcoming Shadowhunters TV show. So, honestly, the re Cassandra Clare trust this company, even though her movie bombed because, because of them. So, I don't know. We'll see. So, Pure by Juliana Beggett is next book, which I've never heard of. So, let's see. In a world devastated by nuclear war, humanity is divided into the peers who live inside a protective dome-shaped bunker, and the wretches who don't press their lives on one side. Uh, 20th Century Fox snagged this one, apparently. So the director of The Spectacular Now is set to direct it. So it might take a while because he's now working on The Circle, so we'll see. So, apparently, the next book is The Song Will Save Your Life by Layla Sales, I think her name is. Another real-world story. This book is about Lise, a 16-year-old misfit who's considering suicide until she discovers an underground rave where she learns to DJ and finds new meaning in things. This one pretty much has a pretty good chance, considering there's a lot of book-to-movie adaptations that are set in the real world that actually come forth. Uh, it's been optioned by Glee producer, actually, so that's interesting. Michael Norvik and the Brian Way producer, Kevin McCollum. So this one is actually set to be both a screen and stage adaptation, so that's pretty interesting. So next one is Let's Know by John Green, Marlene Johnson, and Laura Miracle. Basically a lot of ho short holiday romance stories set in Christmas. So I'm guessing this is going to come during... Oh, it's already set released it. December 9th, 2016. So yeah, Christmas movies. Yay. And it's bought to you by the screenwriter Pitch Perfect. So maybe. Uh... Blood Red Road by Mariah Young is set to... This one's another post-apocalyptic one. Since I'm running out of time here, I'm not gonna 
go through all of them. Uh, really, Scott herself wanted to make this one and acquire the rights back in 2013. So it's been quiet. So another thing. Do to do to do. Firelight by Sophie Jordan. I'm pretty sure this one's about dragons. Ha! Huh, girl is descended from dragons. Ha ha! This one not, might not be happening anymore. Is optioned by Midlife Films in 2011. Do do do. Things don't seem to be moving along for this movie, so it might not actually happen. Ooh, do do do. And of course, the one that I'm most excited for is The Queen of the Tearling. This one is set in the distant future. It's a science fiction novel. Princess Kelsea battling the evil Red Queen in an attempt to claim her throne. This book to movie adaptation was bought by Warner's Brothers. I already know that they cast Emma Watson for the part. So that's pretty interesting. Another thing that I'm bummed about is that they didn't get all the book to movie adaptations. I know Red Queen is supposed to be a book to movie adaptation, same with Throne of Glass and a bunch of other ones. So I don't really know about a lot of them. It seems like there's not a lot of new ones on this list. So, hmm. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes along. I know Pride, Prejudice, and Zombies is already set for February 5th, which I'm gonna go to. I was excited for the trailers to be more thing. But we'll see what this article holds right here. I'm not gonna explain all of them. Just gonna talk about it for a little bit longer. Longer, because these are the ones really set for 2000. And six. Hmm? Why is it not coming up? Ah. How did I get on there? Huh. I don't care. This is interesting. So I know the fifth wave came out, and I don't know if it's doing good or not. I want to see it, but I read, I heard Jeremy John's review about it, so now I'm kind of like terrified about it. Uh, Pride, Prejudice, and Zombies, which comes out February 5th. Whiskey Tonga, which I have no clue what it's about. Uh, the Little Prince, which is set March 18th. Allegiant, of course, which is March 18th, which I'm not excited to see whatsoever. All Through the Looking Glass, which is set for May 27th, which I'm super excited to see. The BFG on July 1st, which I don't know that much about, so, yeah. The Girl on the Train, which comes out October 7th. That didn't take that long for that to be optioned. A Monster Calls by Patrick... I think it's by Patrick Ness, I believe. I know he... This one girl who was writing it died, so he continued to fit, and that's October 14th. A Fantastic Beast and Word Find Them, which is out November 18th, which a lot of people are excited for. Let us know, which I already said. And Miss Pagrillion's Home for Particular Children. Which, I don't know if I'm excited for, but we'll see. But there you guys have it. That was the book-to-movie adaptations that I know about. If you know about a book-to-movie adaptation that I didn't mention here, here that you would like to talk about, comment down below and let me know because I can't, I don't really know a lot. I know Red Queen is op being optioned for a film. I know Throne of Glass is being optioned for a film. I know which The Darkest Minds by Alexandria Bracken is being optioned for filming. And I know which the one I'm most excited for in Ember and the Ashes is also being optioned for film. So I'm excited. But there you guys have it. That was that. So I will see you guys for another video later. And I will talk to you later. Bye.